Riley. You're wondering what we're here to do. We're here to dig beneath the skin of Formula E to find out what it's all about. To find out where it's been with this Gen 1 car and later on to drive the Gen 2 car and see where it's going. And to see if where it's going is somewhere that us petrol heads can embrace and get excited about. No, I haven't gone full Scottish. Sadly, Johnny, Randy and I couldn't make it to Germany. We're shooting Motor Trend's best driver's car in sunny California, but our super sub is a good friend of ours, Marino Franchitti. Marino is a huge car enthusiast and a bloody good sports car racer too. He's competed at Le Mans and Daytona, won the Sebring 12 hour, and is currently developing Singer's latest 911 interpretation, the $1.8 million DLS model and he is brilliantly qualified to assess where Formula E is going and whether we should sit up and pay attention. Today, this is my first opportunity to experience an electric vehicle. And I'm not just talking electric racing car, I'm talking electric vehicle. I've never driven a Tesla. I mean, let's just keep that to ourselves because I don't think they'll let me in this thing once they work that out. Um, okay, he's not actually qualified at all, uh, but that's okay. If Marino can buy into a racing car without an internal combustion engine, then surely anyone can. I believe he didn't tell us he'd never driven an electric car. Cheers, Marino. Formula E has been going for four seasons, all electric racing series racing on street circuits around the world. We're lucky today to be with Audi Sport and have access to the championship winner from last year, the Generation 1 car, and the Generation 2 car, which we're going to see in Season 5 later in the year. Let's go and see what these things can do. Love how keen you are, Marino. Proper racing driver. But before you drive them, maybe we should get under the skin of these cars. It's a testament to the job Formula E did back in 2014 that the first generation cars are still competing, albeit with some modifications, and that they've attracted so many big manufacturers to the party. The basics are simple. The chassis is carbon fiber and aluminium and built by Delara, who supply the IndyCar chassis. It features a single electric motor that powers the rear wheels. The lithium ion battery pack weighs around 770 pounds and is nestled in the middle of the car, right behind the driver's back. Power is around 270 horsepower and the car weighs 1940 pounds, including the driver. For a bit more detail, one of Audi's leading engineers runs Marino through the finer points of their Formula E car. First thing I'm mostly interested in is the battery is obviously the heart of this car, but the motor that drives the wheel. Can you tell me about the setup that you guys have gone with? Because that's something that Audi can control and the other manufacturers yeah. can really choose what is the best solution for the motor. We have the battery, which is the heart of the car and has 28 kilowatt hours. Below this cover, we have uh, the electric machine, the traction machine, with up to 200 kilowatts. Then, uh, connected to the electric machine, we have the yeah, drivetrain, like it's a one-step gearbox and a differential. So a normal differential, so you have plates and everything else like a normal car? We can change the setup of the differential, depending on the tracks, because we are always driving in cities, and there it's really important to change the setup of the yeah. diff. Because I almost thought that you would have complete torque control of both wheels, like you could make each wheel do anything you want, but that's not the case. No, that's not the case. So you could do this with uh, two electric machines, yep. each on one wheel, but uh, for now we stay with uh, one electric machine. Now the tires, you use treaded Michelin tires, whether it's dry, whether it's wet, you have the same tire in all conditions? Yes, we only have one tire from Michelin. This is the same for all teams. The single tyre decision seems strange, but it does help promote close racing. There's less mechanical grip than a slick, hence longer braking distances and more opportunity to make a move into a turn. Incredibly, the teams get just one set of new tyres per race weekend, plus they retain the two best from the previous meeting. Practice, qualifying and the race, wet or dry, are all done on this extremely limited allocation. Next season, they'll have just one complete set for the entire weekend. There is one pit stop during the race, however, where they actually swap cars. These machines won't go a full race distance on one battery, so they simply have a second car waiting for them in the pits. And I'm guessing in a normal car, as the race progresses, the fuel load goes down, so the balance of the car changes, the amount of weight of the car changes. Not so with a Formula E car, it's the same weight at all times. It's the same weight at all times, you have the same balance for the whole time and this is what makes it interesting, but I think if you come from another series where you have a normal combustion engine, it's quite different, you will see. 
I can't wait. <laughs>